you are live. What's up, brother? So I've been hearing the you talk about you, uh, Ukraine and Russia, and um, you do make sense, but it just kind of seems like you're more supporting of, of Russia than Ukraine. My my issue, like um, my issue is Russia shouldn't have invaded at all because. Um, Ukraine is a sovereign country and they should have the right to decide what they do within its borders. Even though, even if we disagree or any other country disagrees, we should, they just have the right to decide what they do within their borders. Like if, if we allowed other countries to invade other countries, if we justify that, uh, just justified countries invading other countries, then the, the world would be a, a huge mess. And I feel like, by mentioning all the reasons that why Ukraine is corrupt, they're all legitimate, and why and all those reasons do show that Ukraine is not innocent, nor is, nor is the U- is United States. But I feel like Russia is ultimately the one to blame for uh, starting an illegal e- invasion, if that makes sense. Brent, are you an American? Yes. Brent, can I ask you to be brutally honest with me? Sure. If ISIS became a world superpower, okay, with nuclear capabilities and had, and had, uh, where do you live in America, if you don't mind? Uh, California. Excellent. Perfect. So uh, I figured you were from Cali, but th- this is, this makes, this, this is even better. I, I want you to try to be as honest with me as possible. If if sure. uh, if if a Mexican let let's say two years ago there was a uh, a virulent anti-American um, who staged a coup and took over Mexico right and then simultaneous right, okay. to that as that's happening ISIS becomes a world superpower and creates a hostile military alliance called uh, MATO the Muslim Alliance to overthrow America whatever right. And the mm-hmm. Mexicans, the Mexicans start doing exercises with the ISIS folks, start buying weapons and start pointing those weapons uh, that can reach California in seven minutes. And both of these states are hostile to the United States. What would you want America Mex- to do? You mean Mexico and Mexico and this uh, this ISIS yep. uh, organization you mean? Yeah. So two years okay. ago, Mexico was taken uh, taken over by a explicitly anti-american death to america cult and and then they're trying ever so slightly to join mato which is the muslim alliance to destroy america what would you want america to do with mexico honestly uh well honestly i'll speak honestly um i don't believe in war but i mean um negotiate uh, diplomacy, and then um, given what uh, what demands do they want, um, and give in. But basically, what what I I don't have nuance in this. Hold on, brother. Hold on. Hold on. Remember, you can't negotiate with these people because they're idealists and they hate America. They want to kill you. So they're impossible to negotiate with. Their policy is: we want as much weapons as possible, and we want to join this alliance against America. What would you want America to do then about you that? Would to build defenses to prevent them t- from those weapons harming the United States. I mean, I don't believe in my brother, invading the country. My brother, yeah. my brother. We're talking about the real world, right? There is no defense for right. a hypersonic missile. It can get to your house in seven minutes. There's no defense for that. So what do you what 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 do you want America to do? Be real. I If you were like even if you were like that really if they if those if what you're saying is true the they have weapons that could in 7 minutes I mean That is a tough question because even if you try to invade, they would they would still use those weapons anyway. I mean, it's kind of like you're kind of stuck. Would you, would you want them to invade before they attacked, or would you want America to go to Mexico and say, "Listen, if you do this, 
If you if you do one more thing to get yourself closer to this NATO thing, we're going to go in there and fuck you up before you have the chance to do that. Is that crazy for America to do? Let me ask you another question, Brent. Sure. Whether or not you like that posture from America, would you be relieved as an American? Especially a Californian, considering that you're bordering Mexico. Let's just be as honest as we possibly can, my brother. Would you be relieved if our country went and said, listen, Mexico, the, if, you, if you go one inch closer to NATO, if you get one more missile from NATO, we're going to go in there and shut that shit down. We're not going to let you bomb the shit out of, our, out of Brent and his family. Would you be relieved if America did that? Well, that is a tough question. And is it? Hmm. You wouldn't be relieved? Because if, if, if the U.S., if, if, if they really had those weapons that you're describing and the U.S. were to try to invade anyone, wouldn't they use those weapons? Say again. If Mexico and its uh, alliance had those weapons and we, the U.S., like in this hypothetical situation, tried to invade, wouldn't they use those weapons anyway? Well, my point is that you would want America to preempt that situation to protect you, wouldn't you? I mean, we use that we use that that situation that excuse before with well, no, weapons we of mass destruction. We didn't, my brother, because number one, there were no weapons of mass destruction, and number two, Iraq doesn't border well, us. Well, that was the excuse. That was the, that was the excuse, and it was it was that a lie, was right? Yes, it was a lie. Okay. Are we arming the Ukrainians with weapons of mass destruction at the border of Russia, yes or no? Uh, I don't know what your definition of weapons of mass destruction, but they are, it, based on weapons what I've been reading, they, they are to, arming the Ukrainians. With weapons that they can, are arming the Ukrainians. That can get to Moscow in seven minutes. Right? Right. Okay, so you as an American would be relieved if we went in there and stopped that by any means necessary, wouldn't you? Especially since you're a Californian. Was I, I didn't do recent, enough research on this, but did they arm him before or after the invasion? Long before, my brother. My brother, in 2014, the neo-Nazis took over that country. Okay? And we've been sending billions of dollars, my brother, even as recently as the Trump administration. Brent, why did Trump get impeached? You know what that phone call was with Zelensky? That phone call was us giving them even more weapons. That was as recently as 2019. Was us giving them more weapons. I just read, I don't know if you saw this or not, but the United States, our official policy that was published on uh, September 1st, 2021, was that we were going to send more weapons and that we rejected any peace or compromise with the Russians. Mm. On top of that, on top of that, Zelensky has said, let's go for peace. And the neo-Nazis in that country said, if you go for peace, we will murder you. So that means that there's a rogue element in that country that wants war, is willing to kill its own president, willing to kill its own people. And those are the people that are being armed to the tune of billions of dollars of U.S. weaponry. And you're saying that the Russians are crazy for saying, yo, I don't want that at our border. They're not, but I, I, I don't feel that isn't it they should have invaded. Isn't it hypocritical for you to say, yeah, I would be relieved if America stopped it, but you're asking a Russian citizen to deal with that? Oh, I'm not saying they, they should deal with it. I mean, what I'm saying is that... Okay. What I'm saying is that it, they shouldn't invade, like, the United States shouldn't invade in, in, in the situ hypothetical situation. They shouldn't invade... They should find ways, defenses against the, that weaponry. I mean, how long? How long has Vladimir Putin tried to negotiate with these folks? Do you know? A decade. I would say at least a, a decade. decade. Yeah, at least a decade. And 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 in two thousand nine. Okay, so let's think this through. You you said you should try to negotiate, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm with you, bro. I'm with you hundred percent. Okay. However, here's the problem. In 
This man has been trying to tell, tell us this for a decade. In 2019, the Ukrainians drafted an amendment in their constitution to push them closer to NATO, which means more U.S. weapons. And then in 2021, on the U.S. side, we said we reject offers for peace and we want more weapons proliferation in, uh, in Ukraine. So he's been doing it for 10 years, and Ukraine is showing signs of more militarization, and so is the United States. So what is Russia supposed to do? In my opinion, they should set up defenses in case there is a, they use those weapons. That's what I think, but I mean, I agree, but that Brett, might not be realistic. Brett, it's not because these missiles can reach Moscow in seven minutes. There's no defense for that. We just have to rely on the goodwill of the Ukrainians that they're not going to use that against them. But the Ukrainians are populated with with insane fascists who are willing to kill their own president. They said that on record. So Russia is supposed to say, yeah, I mean, this 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 is not going to go bad ever. We're signaling in our official documents hostility. They're signaling in their constitution more hostility. What are the Russians supposed to do in that situation? I still believe they should set up more, but I know that's not, that's probably not. Right. You're asking the Russians to do something that you would never want your country to do, bro. Let's just be real. If you felt that your life was threatened by a bunch of crazy Islamo fascists. And, and I they, would expect the, the United States to be ready to defend when they strike. That's, that's, that's what I think. Oh, okay. I mean, cause this, I, I feel like. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Say what you go ahead. Go ahead. Keep, go ahead. I personally feel that if if they have those weapons at the board, it's it's kind of like a um, uh, is it a proxy war? Is the right term? And, yeah. and when um, yeah, you, you set it. up, you have a, a hostile situation where there's guns pointing at you, and then you set up more defenses in case like. I feel like there should be you should set up defenses, but I feel like you shouldn't invade just because they have a lot of weapons you should you should be aware of the situation and and try to set up defense i feel like in the in the hypothetical situation the united states should have defenses in case they were to fire and i feel like the united states should have the firepower to block any missile yeah but they don't that mexico would have we don't we don't nobody does the the my brother, the reason that, that we haven't all died in a nuclear mushroom crowd is the doctrine of mutually assured destruction. And what that means is uh, the U.S. has nukes, the Russians have nukes. We can't do anything to defend ourselves against nukes. But what will happen is if you nuke us, we'll nuke you, and that's how it cancels each other out. Okay? The problem is is that the they have weapons that the, the mass, that Russia cannot defend they can only retaliate with so what you're saying is th this is essentially what you'd be saying brent you'd be saying okay yeah you can liquidate me and my family but then i expect america to respond in kind would that be acceptable to you or would you rather your family not be threatened with liquidation as an american Tell me what you would I, want. I was under the impression that, they, that the United States... Yeah. I'm, I'm not asking you gonna, what you think is right. I'm not asking you what you think is morally right. What I'm asking you is, in the deepest recesses of your heart, what would you want to happen? Would you want to be you and everybody you love liquidated, but then as the missile's coming to drop on your house, you could say, well... Uh, America's going to respond in kind, so I'm okay? Or would you want our country to take actions to make sure that that missile never drops on your house? Tell me what you would want. If it's established that they're going to use the, 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 the missiles, then I would want them to strike. Yeah, I mean... I understand. Obviously, that's not ideal. That's not ideal. And I feel like it, sh it should never get to that point. But I'm if it's you. clearly established that they will use those missiles, if it's if there's evidence that's showing that they will they will use those missiles, not just hold They're, it like holding on them for safekeeping, then I would expect them to strike. But there has to be proof that they will use them. I, Brent, I'm with you 110 percent. And the proof is the Donbass region where they've been shelling the hell out of Russians for the last eight years in violation of the Minsk Accords. They've already done it. 
And then when Zelensky went and said, stop doing this to these people, the Nazis said, get the fuck out of here or we'll kill you. So he's clearly not in control of that country. So if what I'm saying is true, that they've already been doing it for eight years, then what 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 else do you want the Russians to do? So so the same weapons that they, they've been using, that re- I'm not aware of what kind of weapons they're using. Are those the same weapons that would that the U.S. would not have any defenses against? My brother, of course, because a lot of weapons defense is proximity, right? If I'm like 60,000 miles away from you, maybe I can get you with a Patriot missile. But my brother, the, the, we don't have like a magic net that can intercept missiles once they launch, right? Remember the Cuban Missile Crisis? Okay, the Cuban Missile Crisis was, you know, it was before our time, but basically the Russians were setting up ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles, and aiming them at the United States in Cuba. Okay? And you know how the U.S. responded to that? We almost started World War fucking three, And that's not even a border town. They're 90 miles away from us. These people are literally on top of each other. On e- Literally, Ukraine means border. That's, that's why people call it the Ukraine, because it, it means border. So I, I, my issue is, on a moral level, I'm with you. Putin is a dick for going in there and invading the country. But on a human level, I completely understand it. And my thing is, it's unfair and hypocritical for Americans who would never be in the situation that the Russians are in to ask the Russians to deal with that kind of tension for for an inordinate amount of time. Especially when, Brent, we are signaling that we are not on the side of peace for these people. Oh no, I, I I knew that when when I was watching the coverage on CNN, I knew something was wrong. Like how, why you should be pushing for peace and de-escalation. You shouldn't be pushing for, you shouldn't be pushing uh, encouraging Zelensky in, in in that war. They should be working towards uh, being neutral and all this. I mean, maybe that's a little idealistic, but they should be pushing for more peace, not for not encouraging more war. It, it didn't make sense to me. So I that's why I'm saying we're the bad guy. Yeah, I I understand. (laughs) Look, your average Ukrainian doesn't want war and does not want to kill a bunch of Russians. The average Ukrainian voted for Zelensky to come in under peace. Zelensky's entire campaign strategy was, I'm going to bring peace to the region. We're going to stop all these wars. So he got voted in. Okay, some guy with no political clout or whatever, he got, that's how desperately these people want war. Then you had a small faction of neo-Nazis saying, fuck that. If you do anything that actually goes toward peace, we will kill you and hang you in the middle of the town square. And our response to that is we're going to arm the neo-Nazis and we're going to continue this far right anti-peace push. Simultaneous to that, you've got Russians who are terrified and have been begging us for 10 years to stop this shit. So my position on this is Putin is a dick for invading that country. Because anytime you have war, women are going to be raped, kids are going to be orphaned, civilians are going to die. So he's a dick for doing that. Simultaneous to that, I also say that the Nazis there are obvious dicks for doing that, for for, for styming any sort of peace. And then we are the biggest dicks of all, Brent, (laughs) because we are actively taking a side that guarantees more bloodshed. That's my position. Yes. What's your position? Yes, because because uh, they want to make they want to make money off the weapons. The, the U.S. is all they they want to uh, capitalize on take advantage of the situation. Yeah. Okay, I think I think we lost the homie. Um, what? No. Can Brent, you hear you there? Me? I can't hear you. Say something. Hello. Yep. Go ahead. Are you there? Hello? Can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. I can hear you. Yeah, you can hear me? Yep, I can hear you. I'm I'm gonna let you uh I'm gonna let you have the final word. People can hear you. Okay, so what you told what you explained about like the Ukraine uh Russia living in 
in fear of NATO and the weapon and like the the increased weaponry uh, provided by the United States. It makes sense. Okay. And um, I totally get. I still feel that there shouldn't be. I mean, maybe that's that's a little. That's in theory. There shouldn't be war. Like you should. They, Russia I'm should not have invaded. In theory, but I'm we live you. in a world where we have to think practically, and the threat of Ukraine possibly attacking Russia. I, you and it's, I are it's, the, it's, you and I are on the same side. I, I don't know if you heard yes, this because most people would say most people in our country would say either Russia is all bad and ukraine is all innocent or you have some some grifters on youtube i won't say their names who believe that russia is all right and ukraine um the, uh, it, all the reasons you listed about ukraine that just 100 100 percent justifies russia going to war yeah and you, ukraine got what they're what they deserved i disagree with uh, that. there's a new one yeah there's there's some i i can't believe it but um, there's some grifters on YouTube uh, saying that, but there's a nuance. Like, Russia was wrong to invade, but at the same time, Ukraine and the United States should not have escalated the situation to the point where correct Russia resorted to an irresponsible war. There's there, there there's something in between. Yes, and honestly, I I, I don't. I don't, and I'm not in in a position to be involved in politics, so I don't know what the answer is. But all I know is that there's no real innocent party in this, in other, this situation, uh, other than the Russian civilians who just want peace and the Ukrainian right. civilians who voted right. in Zelensky but, and commanded him to bring them right. peace. Right. Right. Uh, right. So there, there is. No, I mean, those are the people that are innocent, but. It's kind of like Ukraine, they, there needs to be a way where they need to de-escalate. Correct. Because if they don't, then, then Russia is going to resort to irresponsible invasions like and, what they're doing now. And, and Brent, it's just not right. Brent, I got to stop you there. You're ter I've never heard anybody use that term before, but that is literally the term. I believe Mr. Putin acted completely irresponsibly. I agree. That is such a perfect way to... Now, granted, the man is in a very difficult position, but I do believe the invasion was irresponsible. That's such a brilliant way of putting it because, you know, we've got, we got nuclear power saber-rattling each other. Brilliant statement. You're 100% right. I agree with you completely. Right. And it's 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 really like and, and you, this nuance will never be discussed in, in media in mainstream media. Like you, you you hear the cheerleading on CNN for Ukraine, like you, you see the Ukrainian flags, yeah. but they mentioned nothing. They mentioned nothing about Iraq or Libya Correct. or Yemen. Yemen. Correct. And it's kind of like um, it's, it's such bullshit. But at the same time, like you do, I don't want to be like one of the, some of those YouTube grifters where they say that Russia was 100 percent justified Correct. in Ukraine to, to deserve what they got. It's, it's just. Bullshit. There's a nuance, and it, it's it's the nuance is very. You're the one of the few that understand the nuance of the situation, and and the situ, the hypothetical you describe, like honestly, I would if if there was intimate war, I would move out of the country. Right. <laughs> that's that's what I would do. Like you know, I would move out of the country. Like like if I, if, if I heard because the the Mexican border is two hours away from me, what? and if I heard. <laughs> If Mexico was on the, I don't care what the United, States, I would move somewhere else. Yeah, but little there, bro, there has to be some element of personal responsibility. Little bro, you have the financial means of doing that. What if I'm dirt poor and I can't go anywhere? Right. Well, right, right, and, but but like like there has to be some element of personal responsibility as well. But at the same time, like if you're if you can't move, then you're just gonna the the worst case scenario is you're gonna. If they're going to strike and it's going to be imminent, then the U.S. has to respond somehow. But there, there has to be proof that those missiles will – it's almost a certainty that those missiles are going to be fired. I, I, That's just I, my opinion. Like, Yeah.
I, I hear you, Brent, man. You look, you and I were it, this this call is the exact reason we have the channel. We're all gonna try to figure this shit out together. To your point, none of us are experts. I certainly am not. Um, you're not, but we're both looking at the situation and saying, Hey, do you see this? Do you see this? And we're coming to a conclusion together. That's the entire point. Thank you so much for calling in. I'll let you have the last word. Um I really like your channel. Um, I've been listening. Thank you so much for calling sure, in, sure, my sure. brother. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. Right, thank you. you. I appreciate it. Right, thank you. you. All right, Have bye. a good one. Yep. Right, bye. That was Brent, dear listener. He was amazing, amazing. And again, guys, this is what we're about. This is what we're about. It's discussion. It's it's talking. It's it's not one guy pontificating to everybody what everybody's supposed to believe. Brent came in there. He came in there strong. He believes what he believes, but he's also open-minded, willing to augment his position, willing to see things from a, from a human perspective. Um, and I, I don't think I don't think there's a more appropriate word that was used. Irresponsible. Russians are irresponsible for invading. Americans are irresponsible for playing this this nuclear game of chicken with uh, a nuclear power. All right.